So... So basically, while I was making this video, the logo has just been revealed, the new logo. I like it. That, 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 that's all you need to know. Hello Universal's fans, this is I, Matt, and today, uh, I'm gonna be basically, well, I'm basically a funeral conductor, as today we are gonna be looking at the Twelfth Doctor's timeline. Yes, this is very much a sequel to my Seventh Doctor's timeline video, because I'm a sellout. So, without further ado, um, I'm gonna send off the Twelfth Doctor's era by, well, just doing this video, so, titles. So, of course, I'm gonna start off with the boring stuff, as usual. I did not use as many resources um, when making this video. I It was just really TARDIS wiki, really. <laughs> Um, and I also use this website called Bradley's Basement as also a sort of rough guide. I'll probably be using this website from now on, seeing as how it, it does the job. It, it, it is, it is a much more up-to-date source than the Doctor Who reference guide, but it doesn't mean I won't use the Doctor Who reference guide, just not in this video because it's not up-to-date to even include the Twelfth Doctor. It, it doesn't even go past Day of the Doctor, so... Also, I will be having a new sort of guide to what I'll be talking about. So, I'm not going to talk about comics. I'm not saying they're not canon. I'm just going to say I'm not going to talk about them. Uh, and also, some stuff may or may not be canon, but it doesn't really matter. I'll probably make a video on its own about that at some point. But I do have a code for what range it is a part of, so it'll probably just scroll up here. Yeah, I think that's given it enough time. So you're just here for the Twelfth Doctor stuff now, so I'm just gonna get right to it. Don't know why I did that. So, of course, we have to start off with Time of the Doctor, because <laughs> it would be stupid not to. It's, 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 it's the first story, chronologically for him, he, the 11th Doctor regenerates into the 12th Doctor. So, yeah. So then the next story would obviously be Deep Breath, as that's what Time of the Doctor leads into. The Doctor's suffering from post-regenerative trauma at this point, and he recognises his new face, but he doesn't know from where. So after an adventure in Victorian London with Clara and the gang, no, 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 seriously, the passion Austrian, he drops a woman off in modern-day Glasgow before he refurbishes the console room. Day of the Doctor comes next, seeing as how the console, the actual time rotor, still has the green, the greenish turquoise lights from Series 7B. So, there we go teams up with all his previous incarnations. So then there's into Dalek where he picks up Clara again. Why did you have to do that, Doctor? Just just why? That's the, it's not necessary. Now, this is when the Doctor wonders if he's a good man. This is important because it was in the trailers and it's basically the Twelfth Doctor's arc in Series 8. So after a few stories that will be scrolling down here, Hopefully, I'll try and get that to work. Um, we've got Listen. That's the next important story in the Twelfth Doctor's life. This is where Clara has her first date. Now, what what happens to Clara during these seasons is important to the Twelfth Doctor's story because whether you like it or not, Clara is an important character to the, 12, the character of the Twelfth Doctor. So now we've got The Crawling Terror, which is a BBC book. I'm placing it here because this is where she calls Danny her boyfriend. So then we skip to the Gareth Roberts episode, The Caretaker, uh, where the Doctor and Danny finally meet. Uh, yeah. So next we get... Can I just not talk about this one? I, okay, I have to. I It's not like I don't consider it canon, I just think it's... On... 
probably the worst Doctor Who story of all time. Kill the Moon. Certainly one of the worst. Clara is appalled that the Doctor just didn't save Earth. Uh, so she just decides to leave after another adventure, of course. Yeah. To be honest, if I had to be in Kill the Moon, I would just want to leave too. Like, honestly, that's, that, that, that is a fate worse than death, that is. However, Clara's faith is restored in the Doctor after he saves everyone in Mummy on the Orient Express. To be honest, my faith would be restored too if I was in Mummy and the Orient Express. So in Flatline, the Doctor learns that Clara has been lying to him about Danny, basically. But in all seriousness, this is probably one of the best portrayals of Clara. And that's sad. So then we have In the Forest of the Night, where Danny finds out too. So then we've got the most eventful story so far, because it's the series finale, Dark Water, Death in Heaven. So Danny dies, and Clara has a crisis about going back to save him. You know, sort of like the companions did in Time Flight, except this has done much better. They go to the 3W Institute, where they meet Missy. Uh, and Missy's the master, if you didn't already know. So you proclaim that the Doctor is the President of the World. Then Danny sacrifices himself to save the world, and Cyberbreak shoots Missy. But then Clara leaves. She decides it's finally time to go, and the Doctor searches for Gallifrey. He fails, but we'll get to that. So then after what I'm going to call Series 8B, I guess, we get to Last Christmas, and oh my gosh, he's back! You think Clara's dead, but no, that was a dream too! That was a dream too! That was a dream too! I apologise for my behaviour, that was uncalled So then there's a whole search to find the Doctor. Um, in, like, The Magician's Apprentice and the Prologue and whatever. So, yeah, and the Doctor's Meditation. That's, that's where he's hiding. So then he's found, and he's been sent to Scarrow because Davros is dying. But he rejuvenates Davros with regeneration energy. So now the Doctor has sonic sunglasses, which is a controversial thing, but I personally like them. So then we've got the girl who died, where uh, the Doctor remembers the, what, where he saw his face before. Um, Frobisher from the Children of Earth. Wait, what? What? Someone that clearly doesn't exist off screen. If you're telling me it's, it's from the fires of Pompeii. That makes sense. Yeah, but we get introduced to Maisie Williams. I'm not calling her by any of her stupid names. A shoulder, me. No, I'm calling her Maisie Williams. Okay. Yeah. So she dies. She is the titular girl who died. Um, but the Doctor turns her into the woman who lived. Speaking of the woman who lived, she returns. That's that's that. I'm pretty sure that's uh, the the only thing. So basically, the Doctor learns about terrorist Saigons and does his whole present of the world routine. And yeah, uh, Clara has been replaced by Bonnie. Um, it's given a chance for Jenna Coleman to act. Um, yeah, and then in the Zygon inversion, the Doctor has his own. Sp has. well. Uh, the Twelfth Doctor has his own defining speech. I would say that this is one of the reasons why I feel people should consider series 9, 12 in higher regard than they do. Sure, the whole Doctor Disco routine. That, that's the thing, but this whole speech that he gives, the anti-war speech, is, is beautiful and I'm rambling so then after that we get face the raven where Clara dies and the doctor go teleports somewhere after being angry with Maisie Williams he teleports to a better story which it showcases his grief it's called heaven sent if you haven't heard of it screw you it showcases the Doctor's grief, it it personifies it with as a story really. And yeah, the Doctor it symbolizes four billion years of him having to deal with his 
grief for Clara, just watch it. It's important. So then we've got the story that basically ruins everything before that. And when I say everything before that, I mean the entirety of Doctor Who. Because the Doctor brings back Clara on Gallifrey. Like, there's a the whole Gallifrey stuff. That's, that's dragged out. That's not even the focus of the episode. It's just dismissed. Like, a, like boring scenes are dragged out. Like, scenes where nothing happens, and where the Doctor's eating soup. So yeah, the Doctor eats soup, that's like, the most important part. <laughs> and, and then, it overthrows Rassilon. That, that, that's, that's important, right? No, it's not. Um, then, brings back Clara, and kills the General, kills General Ken Bones. Regenerates into a woman. And then, he just goes on the run from the Time Lords again, and meets up with Maisie Williams, then forgets about Clara's existence. Can you see why I don't want this to be canon? Th this, this, this just doesn't work. So then we have the Husband's of River Song, where the Doctor basically ends the whole River Song type arc, where he meets up with River, she doesn't know about him being the Doctor, and then he basically sends her off to the first story we meet her in. Silence in the Library, Forest of the Dead, that story, yeah. You also meet Snardol. This will be important. So then we've got what I like to call Series 9B, uh, where these stories happen. But then, right before the events of uh, Series 10, uh, we've got the we've got Extremis, where the Doctor and Nardol formally meet as travelling companions. Uh, these, these are just the flashbacks to Extremis, where the Doctor fakes Missy's death. Well, I say fake Missy's death. He executes Missy, but she's still alive, so executes her. Basically, she's locked in the vault. Then the return of Doctor Mysterio happens. Uh, he creates a superhero accidentally. And then, we get introduced to Bill in the pilot. Basically, the Doctor didn't want a companion, but he also kind of did at the same time, so Bill exists. So then they have a cheeky little adventure in the future of humanity, and smile, and a cheeky little adventure in the past with thin ice. Yeah, that different from the thin ice from the Seventh Doctor. So the Doctor sneak out, the Doctor and Bill sneak out again in Diamond Dogs. But then Bill tries to get a house in Knock Knock, but that fails. Uh, then in Oxygen, the Doctor, Bill and Nardle just head out for an adventure. And uh, then the Doctor is punished by Karma as he goes blind. So then we've got Extremis, where basically the, the monks are trying to invade, but it's a simulation, it's, it's not real. But this gives the Doctor a plan that will happen, that will sort of be executed in the pyramid at the end of the world. And that fails because he, he tries to save humanity without the monks getting involved because the monks obviously want to do malicious intent to humanity. Because uh, they can't just come in and save them. This is Doctor Who. So. Yeah, but Bill just says, here you go, just save humanity, save the Doctor, do it, um, and, and that's, that was with proper consent, so that, that happened, and then Lie of the Land, the biggest disappointment in Series 10, happened, and the, they, they, they stopped that, they stopped that whole thing. So, Nardole now just joins the Doctor on adventures now with Bill, uh, yeah, as we can see from Plague City. So then they find out there's a message on the surface of Mars, so then they go and try and see why. And turns out they meet Ice Warriors. Actually, Empress of Mars is quite alright. They, they, they meet up with Queen May and... Yeah, yeah. They just set up the, like, Galactic Federation 
setting up the Peladon stories. So, in the Eaters of Light, nothing much to point out here, apart from the Doctor letting Missy to have certain freedoms outside the vault. So, because Missy has been so good, the Doctor is allowing her to basically test out her good deeds with World Enough in Time. But Bill dies. That they are on a Mondasian ship, that's with the whole time distortion type thing, but not, not the kind that's too damaging, just it's it's because of a black hole. So then um Bill gets converted into a Cyberman, and then we find out that the person Bill well the person that betrayed Bill was in fact it was me, the master, the whole time! I made a joke before, damn it! But yeah, and then in the Doctor Falls, they try to escape and then just fight off the Cybermen. The Doctor gets wounded in this battle, and he holds off the regeneration because he just doesn't want to regenerate. This isn't like the 10th Doctor where he just regener didn't want to regenerate because of vanity issues. The Doctor just is sick and tired of the regenerative process. I'm just gonna say I'm alright with this because it's 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 the first proper regeneration in a new cycle. He's he's it's it he it, it might be a bit faulty the regenerative process, so so then he just goes after Bill and her girlfriend Heather go and be be like a, a lesbian puddle across the universe, but then the do the doctor seems to have the sort of fever dream where he meets a sexist version of his first incarnation, a a, a random general who seems to be related to Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart, and just goes on an adventure with no plot. I mean, one that I would give 4 out of 10 now thinking about it, because a 6 out of 10 is too much. And yeah, we're up to speed. That's that's the Top Doctor's timeline. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, I'm sorry. Anyway, see ya.